Hey guys, welcome to On Fire Roblox Scripting, and this is the third part of the updated Working Shop series. So, let's just get right into it. So last time, we left off with like a shop, and then a button that opens up the shop, and then uh, you can buy the item. So if I test it right now, over here, under the classic sword, I can just press buy item, and I have a sword in my backpack. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to add in like a lot more elements um so let's just get right into it so you might remember this script from part two of the video this is the script that's under service script service and um, let's actually just rename this to tool handler real quick um so this script uh it works but it's only going to work for one tool uh or like if you want to add a lot more tools it's going to be pretty hard uh so what we can actually do is we, we can make it like a little bit more reusable so we're going to use this thing called a dictionary, a dictionary. Basically, you can like store different values and then like you can retrieve them later. So to create a dictionary, we can just do something like local tools dictionary equals to. And then you want to put in these uh, curly braces like I can just zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, curly braces kind of look like that um, to get those. I think you hold shift and then press on the square brackets. So you just want a curly braces and that's going to create a dictionary for you. Uh, and then we're going to go down a line and then this time we're going to insert square brackets and over here we're going to put in our quotation marks and then we're going to put in classic sword. So this will just be the tool name and then after uh, the square brackets you just run to write equals to and then put in another set of curly braces and then go down the line and then under here. We can write um, price equals to 500 and then put in a comma and then write tool. And then the tool is just going to be uh, this line over here or whatever is referencing the replicated storage item. So it's just going to go in just like that. Uh, so there you go. We have essentially rewired like the tool into a dictionary. Um, so now what we can do is we can actually rewrite this bottom part over here. Uh, if you want, we can actually just delete all of that. So instead, what we're going to write is local selected item equals to the tools dictionary and then put in square brackets. And this is just going to be the item. Remember that when we pass in the parameter item, this is going to be a string. And this is, should match with this over here. So we're just going to get that tool real quick. And then if selected item, then so we're just going to quickly check if the tool exists. And after that, we're going to check if uh, they have enough like cash to buy the item. So if player dot leader stats dot cash dot value is over or equivalent to the selected item dot price, then player dot leader stats dot cash dot value is going to be subtracted by the selected item dot price. So basically what this means is uh, when, when we receive a tool, uh, we're going to check if they have more than the price amount. If they do, we're just going to subtract, uh, that amount, which happens to be 500 in this case. Uh, and then we need to give the tool to the player. So it's going to be local new item equals to selected item dot tool colon clone, and then new item dot parent equals to player dot backpack and then just make sure you do one final check that all the names match up so the name in here the classic sword should match up with the name that you're sending over uh so actually in this case i actually have a space inside classic sword uh, if you're not too sure just copy whatever's inside the quotation marks and just paste it in just like that uh so this is the new structure of the script uh, if we go test it out right now uh nothing should change um so if i buy item I still have like an item just like that. So the reason we, we changed the code uh, to have a dictionary is so that it makes adding items in a lot more easier. Uh, so now I'm going to show you guys how to add more items to the shop. So to add more items to the shop, we got to start off with the UI first. So I'm going to go into our shop UI into the shop frame. And this is the classic sword uh, frame. So I'm just going to control D to duplicate it. And then I can just move this frame around. So let's say I move it over here and I'm going to rename this one to 
Uh, let's say flashlight. We, we can get a flashlight later. Let's say this is going to be my flashlight frame. So we can open up flashlight frame and then under the text, we can just change classic sword into something like flashlight. And then we need to change the image. So I'm going to go into the toolbox if I can find where that is. Is that here? Okay, over here. Cool light. Maybe a flashlight. Just like that. So flashlight, uh, I believe there should be an image for the flashlight, maybe that one. Uh, so just get the image for your tool and then do the same thing. Just paste in the image. Uh, there we go. We have an image. And then for your tool, you can just put it under the replicate storage. Make sure it's under the folder called tools and just like that. So now we have another tool in here that's just called flashlight. And we have a button and a frame that's just called a flashlight. So after we have the button done, we need to get the information frame out. So under information, we're just going to duplicate that also. Um, instead of classic sword info, this is going to be flashlight info, just like that. Uh, same thing, I'm just going to open up that frame. So the image label, I'm just going to change to that flashlight photo. Uh, the cost, let's say a flashlight costs more, let's say 750, you can just change the cost in there. Uh, the title, this is no longer a classic sword, this is a flashlight. And then buy item should stay the same. So basically what we have done is we've just added in another info frame. Now obviously, um, if you try to do stuff with this one, it's going to give you the classic sword. That's actually because we haven't coded in the flashlight yet. Uh, and if you try to click on like classic sword, nothing is going to happen. So let's just do that right now. So under the shop button handler, what we're going to do is we're just going to go down two lines after the end on line 14. And now we're going to create a new function that's going to open up specific frames. So local function, and let's just call this function something like open frame. And then we can pass on a parameter. Uh, let's just call it frame. So we're going to create a new function called open frame. And under here, we're going to go uh, local uh, frame folder. So we're going to create a new variable for the folder of the frames. And this is going to be script.parent.shopframe.information. So that is the folder, as you can see on the right here. This is the folder that is storing all of our classic frame informations. So now we're going to create a, a for loop that's going to loop through everything that's under the frame folder. So for underscore comma. And then let's go, um, let's go frame with a capital F because we don't want to get mixed up with the, this frame over here. So frame, uh, and then in I pairs, and then inside the brackets, we're just going to write the frame folder, colon get children, and then put in the do. So this just creates a new loop that's going to loop through everything that's under the frame folder. Uh, and then we're just going to check if it's a frame. So if frame, so there should be the capital F one. So if frame colon is a, and then inside the brackets, put in quotation marks, right in frame. And then, then, and then the final thing we need to do is check if the frame matches with the frame we want to open. So if uh, capital frame um, is equivalent, so equals equals to the parameter frame, then uh, the capital frame. So frame with the capital F dot visible equals to true so that is going to be our open frame function uh, now we just need one more function that's going to be called close frame so we can just copy that paste it down here uh, we can rename this function to close uh, frames and then we can also get rid of the parameter inside here because we don't need that and then uh, we can just go over here we can delete these few lines and then we can just go frame dot visible equals to false. So now we have a function that opens uh, only the frame that we wanted to open. And then we have a close frame function that closes every single frame. Um, so you might be able to tell what we're trying to do here. But basically, every time we click on a button, we're going to close every other frame. And then we're just going to open up the frame that we want. So to put that into action, we're going to need some more variables. So let's split them up into buttons and frames. So we can start with the buttons. So we need to reference the button. So we need to reference the buttons first. So the first one is going to be 
So we need a reference to buttons first. So the first one is going to be local classic sword button equals to shop dot buttons dot classic sword dot image button. And then we need to do the same thing for flashlight. So local flashlight button equals to shop dot buttons dot flashlight dot image button. And then now we just need to get the respective frames. So this is going to be local classic sword frame equals to shop dot information dot classic sword info. And then we need to do the same thing for flashlight. So local flashlight frame equals to shop dot information dot flashlight info. So now we have all of our variables down. We can now call these functions when we need to. So this is going to be the open frame functions. So we're going to start off with classic sword. So classic sword button dot mouse button in one click colon connect function go in brackets and then go down the line. First thing we're going to do is we're going to close all the frames. So we're going to call close frames and then we're going to open frame. But this time we're going to pass on the parameter and this is going to be the classic sword frame. And then we need to do the same thing for flashlight. So instead of classic sword button, this is going to be flashlight button. And then instead of classic sword frame, we're going to pass on the parameter of the flashlight frame. So this should be all the um, added in script. Uh, might be a little hard to tell, but it's just all that. Um, I will have the script link in the description below. Um, but yeah, let's go test it out real quick. So under here, um, I have disabled uh, both of the frames just to show you it will work with either one. Um, but if I click on classic sword, classic sword pops up and if I click on flashlight flashlight will pop up instead and I can just rotate between these two. So the last thing we need to do is we need to make the flashlight viable. So we're going to go back into the tool handler over here and then what we're just going to do is we're just going to add in a new table for uh, the flashlight instead. So after this curly brace here, you want to make sure that it's aligned with like the classic sword. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a comma and then go down the line and we're going to insert some new square brackets. This time we're going to call this the flashlight. Then we're going to create a new table. So equals and then put in curly braces and we're going to put in, you know, some new information. So price this time is going to be 750 and then the actual tool itself. So tool, this is going to be under the game dot replicate storage dot tools colon wait for child. If you remember earlier, we put it under the replicate storage as a flashlight. Uh, so if I go under replicate storage right now over here, you can see it would be that item right there. And then um, just make sure that after price, you do have a comma uh, or else this whole table will break. And then because we reordered or like rewrote our script inside a dictionary, uh, the last thing we have to do to make this whole thing work is we're just going to copy this flashlight in quotation marks and we're going to head over to the flashlight info under the buy the buy item lo local script for the flashlight. And then we're just going to replace classic sword with flashlight. And that is all we have to do. So let's go test it out. So here I am inside the game. I have 1,600 cash. So let's actually just start with the classic sword. If I buy a classic sword, um, I now have a classic sword and I can, I can use the classic sword. As you can see, I still have cash left over. Um, so I can just go back to the shop. Let's click on flashlight this time buy item the flashlight you can see that i lost 750 dollars and uh i now have a flashlight that i can use so yeah that'll be it for part three of this working shop series um i will have like a kind of like 3.5 um or just like an extra video that will show you like a step-by-step -step guide on how to add more items if you didn't quite get it here um, but basically once you set it up once it's really easy to add more items so that'll just be like a shortened tutorial that shows you how to simply add more items to the shop um there will be a part four coming out uh, soon that will just teach you guys like little things that you could add to your shop like maybe tween service and like adding like a maximum limit and everything um but yeah until then i'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching bye